Racism is like gravity. If you think about it too much, it'll hold you down. That's crazy. You just That's right. gotta keep That's going. Right. You know what's right. You know what God has told you to do. So you go do it. People are gonna say what they want because it sells more newspapers. But I know the work that I have to do. And I'm gonna go do that work. All right, before we start the interview, I'm just gonna say a couple things. And I put some things in this phone because we don't have no rules on this show. <laughs> we just do what we want to do. Okay, I like All right. that. So, the reason that I started this black chair interview mm -hmm. thing was during COVID, yeah. during the pandemic, uh, I got on live and I started talking to everybody I could just because I knew it was like our TV at the time. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah, sure. First, it was a little bit about can we transfer information to other people about what's going on? What have right. you heard right. about the sickness? But then it turned into more of a moment in time where people could actually learn. So if you were in the industry or you were someone trying to start a business, you were trying to be in the film business, whatever it might be that you was trying to do, I wanted to get those people on that live Makes to sense. talk about it, right? Sure. So we had everyone on there from Jamie Foxx to Hillary Swank to you name them. They was there and we had these great conversations and we were averaging 100,000 people watching, listening, asking questions. Mm -hmm. Then it turned into where I was like, man, this is really inspirational. So now we're doing it again, but we're gonna do it bigger and we're gonna find more people that could actually inspire the okay. youth, inspire people that look like us, and more importantly, transfer information, which I think is more valuable than money at times. I agree. I've been knowing you for a very long time. And I would just say this, you know you are probably one of the closest people to me in my entire life. Mm -hmm. You are my brother. I love you to death. And I don't think there's a day that goes by that I don't tell you how proud I am of you. Uh, okay. And okay. I of you, so. And that's, that's right, okay. I wanted to just name a couple of words that I feel describe who you are. Okay. All right, I'll start that way. <laughs> okay. All right. Funny, inspirational, quiet at times, loud at times, bold, heart, passion, relentless, fearless, father, family man. There's a difference. Mm -hmm. Genius, a brother, and the most important, a man of his word. You forgot I, handsome and humble. We know you yeah. got the Disney <laughs> Award. Okay, you can't have everything, okay? You can't have it all. <laughs> Oftentimes, man, I, I wonder, do you understand what you are? We use this word goat, greatest of all time. There's not that many goats, mm -hmm. okay? Michael Jordan, uh, Tom Brady, mm -hmm. Lewis Hamilton, mm -hmm. Eddie Murphy's a goat, mm -hmm. Denzel Washington. Go. Serena Williams. Serena Williams. Venus Williams. Muhammad Ali, obviously. Yeah, to me. Muhammad Ali. You know, Harry Belafonte. And Sydney Portier. Sydney Portier. To me, it's people who transcend not just what they did in their area of expertise, but they created that level of inspiration that moved the game they were in, whatever it is. Whatever it might music, be. Music, business, right. whatever, to the next level. That's right. Okay. You know, you and I have chatted about this in the world of entertainment in, in many respects. You know, I point, like I said, people like James Brown, mm -hmm. okay? Prince. Yes. Okay. I think the new goats are people like John Batiste. That's okay? right. Okay. Yes. Creative, yes. inspirational, and have the capacity to transform the art form. Absolutely. So that's how I think about it. Okay. So yeah. while you're thinking that way, yeah. Robert Smith, Robert F. Smith, you are a goat. It's very kind of you to say. When we name all those names we just named, and you think about what those people meant, and the ones that are not here, what they've left. Right. That's a bigger conversation, right? Oh yeah, no question. Like what they left. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. And then you see your name slide in there. The one thing that's different from all of those people that we just named 
is they all came from either entertainment mm -hmm. or sports. Yeah. All of them. Yeah. They might have transitioned into politics. They mm -hmm. might have transitioned into social justice. Right. But they came from a hub called entertainment. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You, on the other hand, are not an entertainer. You are not an athlete. Some way, somehow, God touched you in a different way mm -hmm. to become what you are today. Yeah. And the question is for you, do you ever think about who you are mm -hmm. and what you mean to our culture and our communities and just the world in general? You're one of the few people who asks me that question in a way that I actually think about it because I, I respect you and respect your opinion so much. Um, I don't think about it in my day-to-day -day life. Mm. Um, it happens every now and then, episodically, I'll put it that way. When I will run into someone who I don't know and randomly, and they tell me how I inspire them, it's amazing. I get letters, people from around the world saying, you know, you know, I've followed you and you've inspired me to start a business. So you have, have inspired me to, to do this work in my community. You know, when you're day to day yeah. doing your work. Yeah, you're in it. You're doing your work. You're, you're actually playing still. Yeah. Right? And, That's right, yes. And I will, I will be frank with you. It's, it's interesting. I have a, a, a very dear friend who's part of my, uh, my Bible study group. And we have come to realize mm. that, you know, we are blessed to be a blessing. And, right. you know, when you talk about, you know, God's mm -hmm. hand on you, it's blessed to be a blessing. What is a blessing? A blessing has the ability to change lives for the mm. positive. The best thing that one can do in one's life is to liberate a human spirit. What I think about is doing the work to enable people to become their best selves. I think about the work and I think about one of the things I know I'm blessed with is a way to come up with what I call elegant solutions to complex problems at scale. Mm. I've learned how to do that through yes. training and mentoring ships and, and, and engagement. And that helps me build systems, and that helps me build platforms, and it right. helps me build infrastructure that enables That's the liberation right. of that human spirit in, right. in multiple ways. There is a great joy that I get from that. Um, but I don't turn the camera around and look at myself in that context until every now and then someone mentions it, and I'm like, oh, wow, that is a good thing that I could do that. That is why you are the greatest. If you spoke to Michael Jordan or Kobe Bryant or Sidney Poitier or any of these people that we have just named, they are so intrigued with the work in front of them that they have not had time to look at the path or the wave that they're leaving behind them. Right. The people that look at the path or the wave or stop and look in the rearview mirror, those are people that crash. Probably. Right? If you're, yeah. if you're driving on a freeway, you're doing 100 miles an hour. Yeah, you gotta look ahead. You gotta look ahead, <laughs> right? You right. can't look in the back and be like, damn, I covered all that ground, right? right? You're, gonna, you're gonna hit right into the... Right. So, so a lot of what you just said is really an athletic mentality, but in the space that you're in, yeah. right? Which that's is, fair. you're running and you're playing the game right here in front of you. Right. And that's all you care about. And you gotta be present. I that's mean, you right. gotta be present. You don't have time to be thinking about coulda, shoulda, woulda, what, I, you know, you, you gotta be no present time. in the game that day. Right. Right. I often speak to a lot of kids that are aspiring to be whatever it is they're trying to be. Yeah. Um, and I try to be a role model, which we don't have a lot of role models anymore. Meaning someone that takes the time to actually speak to them about what they're trying to do and give them accurate or as much information as you can, mm -hmm. right? You'd be surprised how many people do not share information. And yeah. what's crazy is mm -hmm. when I was growing up and I've shared this a few times, I used to have like, some of the OGs be like, oh, youngster, the game is to be sold, not told. And I used to be like, damn, that's crazy. Yeah. Damn, like, man, you can't tell me how to do this or do that? Yeah. Then I realized that slogan is responsible for stopping us in every way be great as black and brown people. Mm -hmm. You mean to tell me I have to buy that information? Right. You can't just tell me that information right. so I can grow. So that comes from what I call the mentality of scarcity. Thank you. Okay. That's right. As opposed to a mentality of abundance. Yes. Okay. That's right. When you start to really understand the divine human capacity to create. Yes. Okay. The ability to, to 
you know, think of ideas and, and to form intentions around those ideas and put action behind those ideas yes. to create. Yes. Okay, if you understand that cycle, uh, then you live in a world of abundance as opposed to one of scarcity. That's exactly right. right. I'm never going to get it back. Oh, if I give it away, that decreases the amount as opposed to... And my value. Right. That's How right. do I enable That's right. and create and expand the opportunity yes. set not only for me, but for the community, because that's the benefit. I was in a discussion with some, some guys earlier today, um, and we were talking about this, and I they said, well, why, Robert, why'd you study chemical engineering? Hmm. I said, well, chemical engineers were, and still are, yep. modern day alchemists. We that's know how exactly to transform right. one form of matter that, to, another. to another. That's exactly I tell right. people, I told them, I said, you, do you know how to take oil to make plastic? No, no. but I do. Right. <laughs> okay, I know how to take sand and make a silicon wafer. Do that's you right. know, but I no, do, that's right? right. Yes. Okay. Yes. The new modern day alchemists right. are software programmers. The ability to have an idea, to program it and create a world, metaphysical world where things can occur and can happen and that can enable a completely different reality that just came from the human mind and yes. intention, okay, delivered through a system, an ecosystem, software and hardware, right? Think about that, think about that power. Now, if you understand that you know, that you can create a universe out of nothing, then you will not have a mentality of scarcity. That's right. Because you can take your ideas and create abundance. Every time. Now, if our children don't see that, mm. don't experience that, and don't learn that in a frame by which they can participate as the creators, then they will feel their scarcity and there's not enough. And they will continue that cycle. Right. So STEM, okay, yes. you think about it, STEM education enables that. You know, you think about a food shortage. Oh man, there's scarcity yes. in food. Well, there's ways technology that you can actually expand the way we do what we do to create massive levels of abundance with fewer resources. But unless you're exposed to that and yes. you've given the frameworks mm -hmm. to analyze, understand, and then create it, yes. you might come with a, if I share, that means less for me, as opposed to, if I share, I can actually create more. Yeah, and when I hear the word scarcity, I automatically go to fear. Of course. Right? Yeah. And if you live in fear, Right? We know the rest of that. Right. The year was 2014. I'm in Hollywood. I'm walking around doing what I do, talking to everybody, trying to get my movies made, trying to figure out how to get into this circle, into that circle. And in a couple of these rooms, I say, I know a guy named Robert Smith. And I said, this dude, man, he's a billionaire, man. Mm -hmm. And I would see people look at me and go, this dude is lying through his teeth, <laughs> right? <clears throat> Ain't no black dude named Robert Smith with that generic name. <laughs> Ain't nobody named, right? And you Google Robert Smith and you get the dude from the care, right? Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, right? So I said, no, it's a guy. And he, like, he has this thing in it. And, and I remember vividly <laughs> somebody came out of one of the meetings and said, hey, is that guy really for real that you said that gave you some money for the movie? And I said, no, it's for real. Now, I'm saying that because for a whole year, I was conversating with you, but I was also conversating with other people. And I had known at that moment that you had made a very, very serious choice mm -hmm. in life mm -hmm. to not be out front, mm -hmm. to not be seen, mm -hmm. to not be heard, but to be behind the scenes moving mountains. Mm -hmm. And early on, I didn't know why until I knew why. Mm -hmm. And when I began to understand why you move the way you move, and I began to become who I am as a filmmaker and a businessman and a philanthropist, and I began to see how media and hateful people and bad energy mm -hmm. and negativity affects light. Right. That's when I really understood this brother is, has so much light mm -hmm. that he understands that there is a army truck full of darkness <laughs> right. riding around the street looking for him yeah. and to stay hidden but keep shining your light. Yeah. Now, 15 you know, years later, us knowing each other, you've come out in terms of now people know you exist. Now people understand where you, what your heart is. Mm -hmm. They know you're not a money-hungry, 
Shark, Titan, you know, mm -hmm. all these great names that we create for people like yourself, you are none of them. Mm -hmm. You're beautiful, you're humble, you're passionate, you actually care. You know that you're a black man right. in America. You know that you're a black man in America. Mm -hmm. And after all those things, all those boxes were checked, and you come out forefront with everyone and you do what you do and you do the thing at the college and you pay the tuition, it becomes national news. It was incredible. Yeah. But knowing the country that we live in right now, that has been systemically built to hold us back. Right. Redlining, mm -hmm. slavery, mm -hmm. Withholding of funding. Dude, Homestead Act, Homestead. Southern Homestead Act. No access to capital. Oh, down, down um, the line. Right? No access to education. 70% of our communities don't have branch banks. I mean, yeah. Okay, yeah. knowing that, and knowing that you are one of one in this in this time, mm -hmm. and hopefully in the next couple of years, there'll be 20 of you. I'm trying to make 100 of I know you are. <laughs> and now that you are in the public eye, I have personally watched media, magazines, Fortune 500 companies. Mm -hmm. I have watched them all take a shot at you. I have watched them all try to pull you down. I've watched them all hate on you. I've watched them all throw darkness at your light. I've watched them all try to pick apart without any hesitation of what it is you're doing, only to fail every time. Love always overcomes hate. Always. Always. But how do you withstand the storm? Yeah. You put it in context mm -hmm. of being a black man in America today. That's right. In the context of my father and his father. Yes. And his father. And the mothers. Yes. Okay. And their mothers. And what led us to this place? Mm. Okay. And what we have to fight and overcome. Eight years old. Uh, I come home, my parents are in tears. And I've never seen my parents cry together. And I said, but what happened? Why are, we, why are you all crying? Mm -hmm. They said, well, they killed your Uncle Roosevelt. Now, I'm eight years old, and Uncle Roosevelt was my brother's godfather. Yes. Beautiful young black man, finished with his master's degree at Colorado State University. Mm. Big, beautiful Afro. Had just gotten engaged. They killed him. Just started a new job with the state of Colorado. His job was to go inspect various facilities throughout the state. Wow. State worker. Yes. He drives down, it's in Canyon City, he drives down and inspect, inspect one of those. Has a Colorado state credit card because, you know, he's a state worker That's to fill right. the gas with the yeah. car that he's driving. And the gas station attendant sees him with this credit card and says it must be stolen, shoots him dead at the gas station. What? Yeah, I'm eight years old. The gas station attendant. Yeah, now I want you to think of, there's a whole lot about why he felt he, had, he was entitled to do that, but let's yes. put that aside. Yes. What's the message that an eight-year-old receives when his parents are saying, you need to be like Uncle Roosevelt. You need to work hard, get a great education, yes. get a master's, yes. get a great job, yes. get married, have a family, become part of the community, but someone outside of the community can take your life in a matter of, Seconds. Seconds. And that's the reality of being a black man in America. Now you can hide or you can go do. It takes a lot of courage yes. to keep forging on. Um, and as a student of history, and I understand where I come from, how I come from, the, the, the lineage of people who have fought yes. and sacrificed and bled so that I have a chance to go to school to go to college, mm. to work any place that I would like, to live anywhere that I yeah. would like, to raise my children anywhere I'd like, to marry the person that I'd like. How can I not fight and continue to fight? What you are doing is changing legacy. You are changing the world that we know today to yeah. something different that we want to see. Right. And I say this because I know that at times you are a threat. You are sure. a threat. You are a threat to everything that a system wants to control. Mm -hmm. You are a threat to everything 
that they say we cannot be. Mm -hmm. You. Yeah. Just like my Uncle Roosevelt. That's exactly right. And I've had many conversations with you about why and how and can you believe this? Like I'd have, I'd, I'd have had all the conversations with yeah. you. Like, well, I'm like, yo, this is crazy. How could? Yeah. And I've always wondered how could someone do this much incredible work, this much, put this much energy into youth, into us, into women, into how could someone be doing this much? And you, you can constantly find one thing and keep on trying to. <laughs> Look, it isn't just the work. Our Community, our kids need to see us fight through the challenges. There are mental challenges that you have to get 100%. through. When someone says, 100%. no, you cannot participate, you cannot have, you can't have that loan for your That's business. Right. You cannot have your kid come to this school because mm. you have the wrong address. Yes. Okay. Yes. All of those things are tests that we, okay, have yes. to show our people that they have to overcome them. How do I know that? I know my family history, at least eight or nine generations of it, and what they had to overcome so that I could actually just be here living. I am not gonna squander my opportunity to advance our people, advance our culture, and advance our society while I'm still here. Mm. I'm not gonna squander that. And you have not. <laughs> so, so I am probably the story of millions of black kids that look mm -hmm. just like me. Yeah. I was raised in project housing, um, single mom, working two jobs and getting welfare. Uneducated, never went to college. Had it not been for basketball, then I probably would have never seen outside of the projects or the community that I lived in. Right. At the time I lived in Gary, Indiana, mm -hmm. my mom was a dreamer. Mm -hmm. So she would always be the person like, well, we gonna get fill the gas tank up. We gonna get some money. We gonna drive to Chicago. We gonna go to Michigan. She was always that person. Like she wanted to go somewhere and see something different. She was trying to break what she right. had been in her whole sure. life. And I am so much her. Mm -hmm. Okay, inside of the bubble that I lived in, I remember the lights being off. I remember heating my whole house with the oven. With the oven. Yeah. I remember playing basketball and being embarrassed to. Take your socks, shoes off, Stretch, you got holes in I got socks. holes in the bottom of the socks, bottom yeah. of the shoes. Mm -hmm. um, people come over, roads come out, make mm -hmm. an appearance, yeah. go back in. That world is ugly, right? But through all of that, there was always like happiness. Mm -hmm. And there was always soulfulness. And there was always like, don't worry, we gonna get past that. Yeah. Like, no matter what, my mom would have dinner on the table. Mm -hmm. And I used to always be like, man, this is crazy. As I got older, I became that person for my family. Right. Where it doesn't matter what's gonna happen, I'm like, no, nah, we'll get through We're gonna it. take it, we're gonna take it. Now, yeah. I'm gonna tell you why I'm saying this. Yeah. When you think about the fact that when they went and started bringing slaves over to this country. No, they were bringing Africans and made them slaves. African people yeah. and making them slaves. Right. When on those boats, millions did not make the trip. Right. Hundreds of thousands did not make the voyage. Mm -hmm. Months at a time. Stowed in the bottom of a ship across the ocean with ungodly things happening. Mm -hmm. 70 to 80% would not make it. Mm -hmm. That 20% that would get off of that voyage is who you are. Oh yeah. And I say that to a lot of people that are younger than me because I want them to understand what you built of. Mm -hmm. There's nothing that can break you. Right. That, unless you let it. Unless you let it. Right. And it doesn't matter that we have to start after they shoot the start gun and we got to wait 30 more minutes and be like, okay, now I can run. Like, mm -hmm. don't none of that matter. And you have exemplified that. Thanks. At the highest level. And the one thing that I love about you, Robert Smith, is that you've never said, oh, man. It don't matter what they did to you. Get out there and make it happen. <laughs> no, you understand. Oh, I know how hard it is. You know how and hard it is. you got to do the lift every day. I know it, man. Yeah, and, and every not, day you got to do the and lift. And you have never glossed over. No, you got to no, do I'm, the lift. We know the game is rigged. Yeah. Right? Yes, every day. So, so, so I want to tell you, man, please, Robert, keep being who you are. I appreciate it, brother. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep showing us that we could actually do the unthinkable. Yeah. Well, I'm going to ask you in the same vein to keep telling the story of who we are, yes. what we are, what we're capable of, and continue to use your platform and your voice That's right. to get all our young people to understand 
that they are enough. They are that enough. They are enough. All right, before you leave, so you know I'm getting ready to do two very important movies for the culture. Yeah. One is John Lewis, The Freedom Ride, which is mm -hmm. being produced by Roxanne and attorney Ben Crump and Matt Rhodes and Kim. One of the most important movies that I will ever partake in. Yeah. The second is Blackula. Okay, I'm gonna start with, with that first. Yes. So I was with John Lewis, 2016, 2017, yes. somewhere in there. And I was at a dinner and he pulls me aside and he says, young man, he said, I love what you're doing. He says, they will come and they will attack you. <clears throat> they will come and they will attack you. He says, you must keep moving forward. He knew. Did he not know? He knew. That's he, insane, He said, man. you must keep moving forward. Beautiful man. Okay. And that's exactly what you've done. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, I don't have a Blackula story, though. Well, I have a Blackula story. <laughs> so, I bring up Blackula because Blackula was one of the first ever black horror films that we've ever had. Oh, yeah. It's the 50th anniversary for it now. And before there was Marvel and right. uh, all these superheroes and Blade and mm -hmm. all these other things, there was a black man with a cape and some fangs yeah. who was betrayed by Dracula, yeah. right? Uh -huh. And uh, I'm gonna bring this story to life only because it is that important to me that we understand our history yeah. and that we take care of the history that was made that they've actually slid to the side. Oh, yeah. So in this, Three funny things. All, all right. right, let me pull up this and we're going to be all done. Thank you, man. This was <laughs> okay. great. Then we go fishing. Then we go fishing. All right. Favorite food? Oh, man, today, burritos. Burritos. One of those slapping burritos things. slamming Woo! today. <laughs> okay, but is that your favorite food? For, is it favorite food? Uh, my favorite food probably, yeah, Mexican food. Tacos, burritos, all that. Well, I love Taco Tuesday. I'm right Tuesday. there. I'm, I love I'm, Taco Tuesday. At the I house. like Chinese food. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I'm between. That's good. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. You could have two of these. Favorite movie? Wow. Um, if you don't say black and blue, no, okay. Yeah. Favorite movie, no, go ahead, go ahead, I'm listening. I'm, go ahead, I'm listening. Favorite movie probably of all time for me, you know, The Godfather. And the second, mm. the second I'm going to say is Gladiator. Those two. Yeah. Those are tough. Gladiator. Yeah. Russell um, Crowe, yeah. Gladiator is tough. Yeah. Favorite scary movie? Man, you know I don't like scary movies. This main one that scared my, the hell out of you. My, my, my parents would not let me go watch Blackula because I, I used to have <laughs> nightmares growing up. Um, you know, the Halloween franchise is pretty scary. Pretty scary. Saw franchise, that stuff's pretty scary. Yeah, anytime someone busts down the door and, and swing an axe or a yeah, knife, yeah, that's, yeah, that's kind of scary. That's real, that's real scary. Yeah, you know, you, you I keep, can deal with everything else. Keep you with up that. at night a little yes, bit. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, um, all that said, yes. I have to say today, us freaked me out. Us was a very scary movie. Right? It was, a, it, was a, it was a mentally scary movie. Yeah. Yes. You just think about this whole parallel. Yeah. You know, Tethering and yeah, all of that. I was it, like, yeah. oh my gosh. Right? Yes. You start thinking about that. Yes. Right? Best memory of being a kid. It could just be a quick memory. Me and my brother walking down to the Y to go swimming, you know what I mean? Greatest time of your life. Eating, eating Jolly Ranchers at the end of, you know, walking home and just being kids in the summer. I mean, I, love, I loved that feeling of being safe in my own community. community. That's it, man. Okay. Isn't that crazy? It is crazy. Like, out of your whole life, it. you could think right back to that moment. We could just walk out and just go walk down to the YMCA. You know, we go swimming lessons. We go swimming, jump on the trampoline, you know, yeah. you know play basketball and walk home because you had to be home before the streetlights turned on. You know what I mean? And you'd be there crazy. all day all in the day. summer. That's all life. day. Yeah. That's what life is. Yeah. All right. Last one. Yeah. You better get this right. Uh oh. Michael Jordan or LeBron. Go ahead, man. Go ahead. Let me hear it, man. Michael Jordan or LeBron. What did you do all that for? Why'd you just do all that? It's actually pretty easy. Oh, Bill Russell. Bill Russell? 11 rings, baby. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm gonna let you have that right now. Rings, okay, I'm gonna let you have that right now. I'm gonna let you have it right now. Eleven rings. All right. Last gym I need from you. Okay. How or what can we do as a black community to figure out how we can work together? Our children understand the importance of 
economic yes. codependence. Yes. That wasn't taught to us. That's right. Okay, I grew up in a time when it was first starting to desegregate. Yes. In segregation, it was economic codependence. Desegregation is like, okay, become a part of a broader infrastructure of opportunity. Yes. Our children understand it's important to do both. Damn, that's we circulate right. dollars. That's right. Okay. That's right. Enable and okay, work with others. Participate. Yes. Work with all yes. others. Collaborate. Yes. And participate in the next generation economy. That's okay, right. Which is digital. Yep. That's what we got to do. We just got to continue to celebrate the successes. Mm -hmm. Don't be tempted to to criticize the failures. I love how Jill Jill Scott said, yeah. you know, everybody sometimes got to swim upstream. Guess yep. what? That's right. Okay, that's what happens. Period. Okay. Yes. Celebrate the successes in our community and enable those successes to propagate. That's what we got to do. 100%. So, and we'll do that. Robert, I love you, man. Love you too, Listen, I appreciate it, brother. Thank you so much for who you are. Thank you for believing no, in me. Thanks for this time, man. No, I'm serious, yeah. man. Thank you, man. Because if, you know, I would have figured it out, but yeah. had, it, had it not been for you, man, my life would have been completely God, different. I can tell you, God has, has a way of yes. ensuring that intervention occurs at the right time. So that's we'll right. Do that. Come on, let's man. go fishing. Come on, wait, 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 do that, and now we gotta do that. Bam! Bam. Let's go fishing, here, man. We out right. here. All right, we did it. See y'all.